What's up everyone, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and today I'm going to be talking about Dave the Diver, developed by Mint Rocket. 2023 has been a loaded year for gamers, with almost every month a huge release or surprising game has hit the scene, having gamers like myself scrambling to find the time and energy to play all these games. One group of games in particular that have been pretty exceptional in 2023 is the indie games. There have been quite a few gems from indie studios. From Sea of Stars to Lies of P, which we reviewed on our channel. But there is an indie game that doesn't get the same amount of attention as the rest I described, and that's Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver is a hybrid marine RPG adventure that mixes deep sea exploring and fishing with running a sushi restaurant. Now I have to be honest, when Dave the Diver released in June on the PC with really strong reviews, and critics describing this game as memorable, exceptionally charming, I was skeptical for a few reasons. First off, with all due respect, fishing to me is pretty boring. And although I do enjoy myself a good sushi dish, a game focused on fishing and running a sushi restaurant sounded like it would be repetitive and tiresome. Add in some corny dialogue from the previews and I felt this game would be a dud for me. There's also been quite a few games made for PC that have tried to transition to console and not working out very well. But now Dave the Diver is on Switch and Mars is handing me my next assignment to investigate and report on Dave the Diver and answer some important questions. So I grab my scuba gear and don't in. Is Dave the Diver truly amazing on the Nintendo Switch? Is this game a frontrunner for Indie Game of the Year? In my review, I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. But before we continue with the review, if you like variety gaming content, which includes reviews, opinion pieces, previews, and streams, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And now back to the review. First, let's talk about the good. One of the biggest praises I saw from critics and PC gamers in my research before starting the game is its memorable characters and writing. Now in the beginning, it starts off with some standard cheesy and corny dialogue and some cutscenes, but as I started to sweat through my playthrough and the hours continued to go by, well, my god, these PC gamers were not joking. The gameplay and characters ooze charm. Without diving into too many spoilers, you follow Dave, our husky protagonist, that many characters seem to remind him of his weight issue. Dave is called by his buddy Cobra to help investigate the interior of the Blue Hole Sea, as well as help with a sushi restaurant to make loads of cash. Dave is funny, but the charm doesn't stop there. You are peppered with a host of quirky allies and even antagonists that you meet and interact with, learn their backstory throughout the game. You will have moments that will make you smile, feel sad, and be serious, and even make you laugh with its corny and cringy dialogue. These type of characters and writing remind me of an old anime or cartoon, which I enjoyed. Another aspect of the writing and characters I liked is the cutscenes. This game uses a retro and pixelated art style, and the cutscenes that they use are funny, outrageous, and really fits the tone of this game. As I played more and more of the game, I looked forward to the new characters I would meet and some of the funny cutscenes that would take place. Now don't get me wrong, the writing in this game would not be receiving Academy Awards, but it made me like the characters, and Dave is a chunky protagonist I can get behind. Another good aspect I want to address is the content. This game was $22 in the Nintendo store, and I was pretty blown away at the amount of stuff you can do. It takes an average of 23 hours to beat the main objectives, and up to 46 hours to complete the side content. Now I know, length of a game is not everything, but, this game offers variability in the objectives you complete. The missions range from material grabbing, fishing and hunting, up to over 200 species of fishes, sushi, restaurant operations, escort missions, fighting pirates, environmentalists, bosses, doing research missions, mini games, seahorse racing, farming, photo taking, gambling, there is so much to offer in this game. You can also access eight different guns, use different explosives, use melee weapons, you can upgrade your guns as well. This game not only offers a lot to do, but the quality of its content is pretty strong. Dave the Diver does a strong job of running a fine line between quantity and quality of its content. Finally, in my opinion, one of the best aspects of the game is running Bancho Sushi Restaurant. The sushi restaurant is where you make money serving customers that allows you to level Level up your character attributes and weapons. But this is not just a standard waiter job serving sushi and drinks. You must develop the menu with countless recipes based on your obtained resources, hire and train staff, discover new recipes, decorate the interior, and much more. There are also VIP guests 
who require specific dishes and events that focus on dishes from a specific resource. It takes aspects of games like Overcooked and Played Up that works well in this environment. It's a lot on your plate, but with some planning, you would make even Gordon Ramsay smile. Donkey. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. One of the issues I had during my time with the game is the controls. When you go on your sea adventures, you must use a harpoon or gun that you aim to hunt and defend yourself against these different species. Sounds easy, but the problem is the sensitivity using pro controllers or switch joysticks is severe, which makes you miss quite often. What makes it worse is there is no simple way to change sensitivity when aiming. What also compounds this problem even further is that the hit registry or hit boxes on the fish are unforgiving. Countless times my harpoon or gun would appear to strike those damn pixelated fish and it just wouldn't register. And at other times, it looks like I missed or grazed the fish and it would. These aspects could definitely use some fine tuning. I also want to add there is not key mapping or control mapping that I think would add some accessibility and customization that is needed. The next thing I want to address is the performance. I want to make crystal clear the performance is not by any means awful, but I did experience a couple game crashes in my playthrough. I also had a few moments where the game lagged when swimming in the sea, as well as some texture rendering that took some time to come through. These issues were not constant, but Dave the Diver also doesn't have unbelievable graphics or aspects in the game that should require high performance. With that in mind, you would like a more consistent performance on console. Finally, the last thing I wanted to address is the variability in the Blue Hole Sea Bed. It is noted in the game that the sea has magic powers that change the landscape of the sea when diving in. And it's true that when you dive into the sea, the landscape does change. And I was really happy at the start of my playthrough. The more hours you put in, the more times you see the same structure of the sea besides some minor changes. I do like the aspect of diving during the day and the night and how the species of fish change and the behavior of these fish change. But I do wish there was some more variability in the seabed. Overall, when it comes to my experience with Dave the Diver, I thought there was positives and negatives. I was skeptical before playing playing the game as I felt it wouldn't keep me interested, but I was blown away by its characters, charm, and content. Yes, this game could absolutely use some fine tuning on its console controls, performance, and map variability, but boy this game is awesome. And I recommend for those who are looking for a casual but fun time. I'm giving Dave the Diver a 9 out of 10 and a Marsman Gaming stamp of approval. By year's end, this game should be one of the front runners for Indie Game of the Year. I am not sure what happens next for Dave, but this game had me hooked and I am excited to see what recipe they have cooking for us next. Thank you everyone for watching. If you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future content. This is Frank from Marsman Gaming, signing off. See ya.